One of my greatest fears in discerning priesthood, um, besides not being a good student, was that I would get up one day to a pulpit and um, really not have anything to say, nothing at all. And if you know me and my friends and certainly the students and the bishop and the guys who I live, I always have something to say. But in my prayer this morning, I really thought a lot about how much of what we do as followers of Jesus has nothing to do with us. Really has nothing to do with our abilities. It's really, I think, an awareness or an observation, if you will. At the end of the, the Acts of the Apostles, all those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him, Stephen, and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. They're hearing him talk. Tomorrow we'll hear of his martyrdom, the first martyr, if you will, of, for Christ. You know, they saw, they observed, not him, Maybe in looking at him, they saw nothing, but looking deeper into his heart, they saw this light, this face of an angel. You think about the, the gospel, the, the gospel today. You know, they're, they're, they want Jesus. They want to see him. And Jesus is challenging them because, well, you know, it's not because of the signs. It's because he gave them something to eat. But yet that what sewed it together for me, what the thread, the stitch that made sense for me was the, the gospel acclamation. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Why? It's the psalm. Psalm 119, the long, longest of all the psalms. The psalm just before the songs of ascent, if you will, just before the songs going up to, to Jerusalem. If you get a chance, um, read and pray over Psalm 119 today. In Psalm 119, we can find really so much of who we are because it's so much about following the law, following God's law following what Jesus set out for us to love the Lord, your God with all of our heart, our mind and, and our soul. Psalm 119 reminds us that it's not about our nothingness. It's about really what God places in us and works through us. You see, I think in, in the gospel, in a way, all of those people were following Jesus because they had nothing. They wanted something. And we know the something he has. The something is the truth. The something is, is the reality of, of loving. And if you were with us in morning prayer a little bit ago, Dan proclaimed from Romans, the word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. For if we confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah, I think for me, still my greatest fear is having nothing to say. And maybe even more how to say the truth in love. And live the truth in love. I think Psalm 19 gives, it gives us everything we need. Really challenges us to remove any falsities about our lives. And really live in the truth, live in the precepts, live in what God has set out for us to live. I really think that's what they were seeing in Stephen in that face of an angel. 
He was living, living with abandonment, if you will. He surrendered to God, knowing that God would do everything for him. You know, my prayer in my life is that I would just surrender to God, knowing that he's going to do everything in my life. Maybe that needs to be all of our prayer today, that we could surrender. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Why? Because it's not just about the food that comes into our bodies. It's about every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Amen.